Portia Roberson, thank you for joining us on Hill TV. Thank you for having me. I wanted to come here because I know this is a place um, when we think about manufacturing, when we think about uh, skills mismatch, people not having the ability to have their own, uh, to have the skills for the jobs that exist, or even spatial mismatch, how to get to the jobs they need to have. This is a place where you guys are focused on trying to fix those problems. Tell us how you're doing that. That's exactly right. So what we know here at Focus Hope is that we have a large group of residents around this area that don't have the skill set to go right into work or they're underemployed. They're at they're working, but they're at a job that doesn't have a future, really. So what we try to do is match them with skill sets in terms of what they're interested in, um, where they're going to be able to get to every day if they're going to an employer. But we also talk about the barriers that exist in communities like Detroit. Um, how do you get there? I mean, people don't think about that, right? You, you're blessed to have had a car in your house right. your whole life. You don't think about the fact that somebody's taking a bus and buses aren't always reliable. Or you think about the fact that I can give you the best employee with the best skills, but at three o'clock, if their child is walking home to an empty house and you're worried about whether your child has keyed into the house and gotten in and not turned on the stove and has the sandwich that you left for them, from three to five, you're probably not as focused on that job. You're focused on what's going on with your child. So our child care program is there to assist in that. So yeah, I think what you see here is uh, teachers, instructors, students who want to change their lives but are really not waiting on anybody to do it for them are coming to Focus Hope because they know here they can change their lives. Tell us about Focus Hope. As a Detroiter, you're familiar with Focus Hope. We've been around for 51 years. We're celebrating our 51st year this year, actually. Um, we were started after the 1967 rebellion. Father Cunningham and Eleanor, Eleanor Jositis, who are legendary in this town, um, started it after the rebellion, after the riots, because they knew that culturally and through race relations, the way to rebuild the community was to put people back to work and to develop an organization that brought people in from around this area that we're located in. We are here on a, a shop floor. We had a little walk around yes. um, so we could see what people were up to. Tell us what the, the core of the work is that you guys do here. So we have a couple different um, programs. We do Head Start and Early Head Start, Early Education. So we have a child center. Um, and then we have a food program for our seniors. So we feed 41,000 seniors a month in the Detroit area and the Tri-County area. So we have a lot of people we're helping out in a lot of ways. But of course, we're known for our workforce programs. And so we do training for uh, truck driving. We do machinist training, high-low robotics. We do all kinds of training. Um, um, we know that the best way to talk about the revitalization of Detroit is through getting people to work and they will create neighborhoods that they can be proud of and they want to live in and they will do all the things that we talk about anytime we talk about the new Detroit. Flex and Gate is a company that is a supplier basically for Ford Motor Company. Um, about two years ago they opened a plant on the east side of Detroit. Really there hadn't been anything open like that in a very long time with a lot of job opportunities which is right in the city of Detroit. A lot of the manufacturing you see and a lot of the suppliers are located in the suburbs and so a couple buses you have to take, a smart bus, a city bus, a couple different opportunities and so it was we were really eager to be a part of that in terms of putting people to work in the neighborhood that they live in. And so we work with Flex and Gate. People came here to Focus Hope. They trained. They did a short training, made sure that they were drug free, made sure that they had all the skills they needed, and then basically sent them to work. What's happening in America, you and I talked about this a little bit before, is we're seeing a manufacturing decline yep. when it comes to employment. Um, people are making more money, but they're using fewer people to get the same productivity robots and software are replacing people. Yep. How do you grapple with that while you're training people for manufacturing jobs? So in the 10 months I've been here, one of the things we've been solely focused on is where is the labor market going to grow? And how do we get ahead of that or at least stay relevant in that? So you see a lot of machines on the shop floor, but we probably won't buy as many machines anymore because we want to be able to pivot as the market pivots, right? So we don't want to buy huge machines that we train people to work in the automotive industry because we know the decline is there in terms of how many people they're hiring. So we have a tech hire program. We have an IT program. We're trying to figure out where the industry is growing. When I talked about our truck driving program, it's because there are there's a need for 12,000 truck drivers right in this area. We know even even with Amazon and your deliveries from Amazon, somebody's still got to get them there. They haven't figured out the drone thing to drop it on your front porch yet, so you've still got to get it there. And so we're trying to figure out where is the growth there. We're looking at things like tree trimming programs and, and, and energy and all the kind of things that we know have growth. So we don't want to train somebody at Focus Hope for a job that won't exist in six months. Let's talk a little bit about how you came to this because you said you're, you know, you're a lawyer. I you've am. been in the Justice Department, the White House, uh, the Mayor's Office. Um, 
I don't know about your family. My family came here to walk, work in the auto industry yep. over the my south. Daddy worked at Ford's, as we call it, with the nest. <laughs> right, Ford's with the nest. <laughs> <laughs> and so now here you are back in a manufacturing context. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> um, yeah, it is a circle that I didn't probably predict when I was in law school, um, working on like a plant floor in a, in a plant. Um, but it's all come full circle. Like I said, I was very blessed. My family didn't need the services of Focus Hope, but lots of my friends came here all the time. I came here because we have we use volunteers all the time. We do it now, we did it then, and so I would come and volunteer. There used to be a Wonder Bread right next door, so I was familiar with this area because my mom would bring us up here to get bread and get Hostess cupcakes and all that kind of good stuff. So I knew. We're talking about that on the way right. up here because I would say it would smell. Yes, you, smell you would the bread smell it, right? A mile, and it smelled and delicious, <laughs> right, right, right. So I knew Focus Hope, and um, I had been in government um, for. And it feels like my whole career um, in some form or fashion. I started out as a, a defense attorney, criminal defense attorney, moved into prosecutor's office here in Wayne County. And so when it was time for me to leave the city, when I was ready to kind of transition to something else, um, I knew that they were looking for a CEO. And I said, I'm going to toss my hat in the ring and see what happens. And like I said, the, the great thing about Focus Hope is we do so many different things. That means that some days I'm asking myself, where, what, wait, what am I focused on right now? But the reality of it is I enjoy the fact that we're moving from thing to thing and we're trying to figure out how we best serve the people who come through the doors focus on. So I'm fascinated by something you just said. You worked in uh, the criminal law field, both as a defense attorney and as a prosecutor. I did. So you've seen what happens when um, poverty, yep. families, all these things intersect and people end up in trouble with the law. How does that impact the work you're doing well, here? That's, that's exactly it. The vast majority of people that I either represented or, or prosecuted, um, the crimes were ones out of poverty. People did not have anything. And so, you know, if you're living day to day and you're just trying to make it, you go out and you, you, you pick something up that you shouldn't have picked up, you know, um, that wasn't yours to begin with. You do things that you never thought you would do. People don't start off saying, I'm going to be a criminal, right? I'm going to do something that I shouldn't do. Circumstances, the kind of things they're doing. And so that's why this kind of work in many ways is the thing that I think I was kind of guided to do in the sense that we're trying to keep people out of that criminal justice system or in the, in the cases where they've made that mistake, looking for employers that are felon friendly and we'll take them back and give them a second opportunity. Um, that's what this is supposed to be about, right? Making sure that people have those opportunities they wouldn't otherwise have. Now you've had some presidential candidates come over yeah. here uh, <laughs> as they are campaigning in Michigan and thinking about 2020 election. What do you tell them when they come to Focus Hope? What do they need to know about the people you serve? I think they need to know that they want the same things that every other voter wants. You know, uh, people ask me all the time, like, what is exclusive about uh, African-American voters? What do Detroit voters want to hear? And they want to hear the same thing Macomb County voters want to hear, which is a suburb of Detroit area. Um, you know, how do I get to work? I just want to be able to work. I want to be able to feed my family. I want my kids to get a good education. And so what I tell them is programs like ours are the way that you um, get that to happen, that people get what they are looking for from, from government, from a presidential candidate. So keep in mind that their experiences are that they have to come to these kind of programs so that they can better themselves. And, and when they make that choice, you should support them in making sure that these programs exist, not only in Detroit, but around the country.